Welcome back 3D SSPP users. I'm Kelly with the University of Michigan Center for Ergonomics and I am continuing to share with you some information and insights about the 3D SSPP software developed right here at the University of Michigan. This time we're going to take a closer look at entering forces in the hand loads menu. To begin we're going to click the task inputs drop down and go down until we can select hand loads. Click that and then the hand loads menu is going to display. There are two factors that are going to be most prominent in this menu both in the left and right applied loads, and those are going to be magnitude and direction, listed here as angle and measured in degrees. Magnitude is going to be a pretty straightforward measurement. It is simply the force applied to the hand. For lifting, it would be a downward force. One thing to note with the magnitude dialog boxes here is that if I were to change the weight in both hands to 20 pounds and then hit apply, that is going to make those changes reflected in our status window. You'll see changes in multiple areas within that window. The next thing we're going to focus on is the direction of that force. So if I'm lifting something, you'll look at one of your avatar views, in this case the side view, and you should see the red force indicator with a downward facing arrow. A really easy way to ensure that you're getting the direction of the force right while in the hand loads window is to go down to these two boxes near the bottom of the hand loads window labeled left effort and right effort respectively and then select one of these clickable circles that corresponds to whatever type of activity you're measuring for. When you do that, 3D SSP is going to set the angles to the appropriate direction for the action you have specified, and you can then hit apply to tell the program to reflect those changes. I highly recommend taking a moment to click through these different effort types and applying those to see how 3D SSPP shows those types of actions with its force indicators. While these six effort types can give you a good starting point, Sometimes you need to set an angle that isn't at a preset value. And in that case, you are going to select by angle entry and then enter your vertical and horizontal angle value via the two angle dialog boxes contained in each of the applied load boxes at the top of the hand loads window. Entering the degrees manually may take some effort early on and to help you get a better handle on what degrees translate to what kind of force, I'm going to talk through a few of those here. In order to input a force being lifted, the force indicator should be pointing downward so you would enter a vertical direction of negative 90 degrees. If you were pushing down, then the force indicator should be pointing upward, and you would enter a vertical force of positive 90 degrees. For horizontal angles, if the force on the hand is pointing to the right, then the person is pushing to the left, and the entry should be a zero degree horizontal angle. If the horizontal force is directed forward, meaning the person is pulling back, then that will result in a 90 degrees horizontal angle. If the force applied to the hand is directed to the left, that would be a 180 degree horizontal angle. Finally, if the person is pushing forward, then the force on the hand is directed backward or toward the body and the horizontal angle should be entered as a negative 90 degrees. The horizontal angle is calculated from looking at the avatar from overhead, and the vertical is calculated from measuring with respect to the horizon. One other cool trick you can do from this menu is if you'd like to incrementally scale up the amount of one of these values, you can highlight, say, the right applied load magnitude value, go to the increment box in the hand loads window, select the increment of your choice, we'll choose five for the sake of demonstration, and then hit either the plus or minus button to incrementally raise or decrease that value. If you'd like that to happen to both hands, you can check the both hands magnitude checkbox above the increments, and now your selection of the plus or minus increment here will be reflected in both hands magnitude dialog boxes above. Another way to increase your magnitude in each hand, and this is a relatively new feature within 3D SSPP, is to click within one of the hand magnitude dialog boxes and use your mouse scroll wheel to increase or decrease the magnitude amount by one increment per scroll. Moving on, and just to clarify here, we're done with our hand loads calculations at this point, and you can apply your changes. But that's not going to close your hand loads menu. Hitting the OK button here will both apply changes and close the hand loads menu. That's it for our part one video of the hand loads menu. The next video is going to dive a little more deeply into some more advanced features found within the hand loads menu. Be sure to tune into that video for an in-depth look at how you can alter your hand loads calculations by entering hand force and torque by component and by using the hand force solver. Thanks for watching.